Yeah. So anyway, Peter, that's my father, who's uh, travelled over with us for this journey to um, sort of give a bit of a plug about Thunder and also fly some rockets. As Barry said, we've uh, given you this easy 60 miles real workout today and continue doing that tomorrow. But anyway, we're here to talk about Thunder, the big launch that we're holding in March next year. Um, we've been plugging this for about two and a half years, so for those who have only just recently heard about it, sorry. I need to get around to more rocketry forums and the likes because it's been everywhere. Um, sorry, wait, I don't have a buzzer thing, so. Space one? Space one? Yeah, no, it's Australia. Yeah. There we go. Alright. <coughs> so in Australia, we have a, um, a body similar to NAR and Tripoli and the likes of that. The NMRS, which is the Australian Model Rocket Society. Uh, it's an all-inclusive group, we like to call it. So we're a lot of the events that we, we, we come over to America quite a bit and fly with different groups, uh, and we find that a lot of the groups are, you know, sort of stick to their own core um, members and the likes. The whole um, purpose of Thunder, well, the purpose of Thunder is to have to be launched, obviously, but the AMRS uh, is an all-inclusive group. We're going to have people that have tentatively um, committed to coming everywhere from um, obviously, USA and Canada. Uh, we have Japan, the Netherlands, Germany, Denmark, South Africa, Argentina, New Zealand, our eighth state. It's not really good, but we'd say that. And they hate it when we say that. Uh, in the United Kingdom, um, I'll probably miss a couple there, but it's, it's going to be a, a very international um, style event that hopefully we can get uh, all of these groups together, uh, which I think is going to be fairly unique and probably not done before. So, uh, people call us uh, an, an indie group, so to say, but we, we follow all the same um, codes and everything as the NAR. Um, obviously, the main variations for us is we have everything in metric. So, for those who can't understand, we do write it in Perilla as well. Uh, this is a photo of our long site that we're flying at. We've been plugging 60,000 reasons to come to Australia. The area that we actually use is 45,000 acres of flat land to the horizon. Uh, we have a 60,000 foot altitude. Uh, of that, we have a 1,000 foot buffer and we're at 800 feet, so we can fly 58,000 each year. In Australia, for most of our sites, we do have a requirement for $20 million insurance. Anybody that comes to the event, part of the registration will be a temporary membership to the AMRS for the purpose of the event, and you will be covered by the 20 million. There's no requirements for any insurances from America or anything like that. It is fully insured under uh, our, our 20 billion. Now, there's many uh, big projects and featured flights that are planned. For those who haven't seen, we are doing a full-scale V2, one-to-one. Wow. One. Um, as you can see, it's the group who are handling, um, this one is Rocketry Victoria, so they're, they're down south. And there's a couple of photos of the production fins. Uh, the top right there, Carl, who's the project lead, he, um, that's the midsection of the rocket, and that weighs in a whopping 70 pounds. So we're trying a lot of Aussie um, so engineering. The rocket itself may not be the most impressive motor-wise, but it's going to yeah, be the full scale, and as we know, it is the largest um, model rocket ever built. Uh, and they do have a website, World Record Rocket, if you want to check that out. If you don't have to remember that, you can get on the Thunder website and all the information's there. There's lots of other cool projects there. Um, the, for those who uh, know about the Assessor Radio 25,000s, uh, we managed to get five of those, so there's going to be a bunch of those flying, as well as many other big uh, motors. Part of um, what we do, and I'll just read this, <coughs> Uh, with the phenomenal support from the landowners and their amazing story about survival, John, who is the, uh, the main farmer, uh, was the recipient of a heart transplant after surviving three weeks on an artificial heart through the miracle efforts of the Prince Charles Hospital. You can read and see more of Thunder. Uh, without John, we basically wouldn't have had the site in the first place, so we're trying to raise some money as part of our, uh, the whole program for the Prince Charles. Uh, if people are willing to dig deep, fantastic. If not, we're not going to hold it against you, but um, it's just something that we're, we're 
advertising and pushing because, um, yeah, to, like I said, the three weeks on an artificial heart is quite amazing. So um, the work that they do to give our farmer a fighting chance is fantastic. We've had a lot of um, banners that we've put on different websites and whatnot, and it's trying to give a bit of a plug about some things to do in Australia. Now, some of these, the bottom two in particular, they're um, obviously different sites. You've got Sydney Harbour down the bottom there, uh, Willaroo or Ayers Rock, the um, White Haven Beach, and that's the white beach there, that is actually how white the beaches are. And in fact, we have an island called Fraser Island, and um, Waikiki, uh, yeah, Waikiki, uh, they actually import their white sand from Australia, from Fraser Island. So the beautiful white sands, well, that's right. Great Barrier Reef, for those people who want to do diving and snorkeling, uh, that's only a couple of hours north of Brisbane, which is the main site to fly into. And kangaroos and koalas, because people like to see those things, and they're cute. <laughs> now, <clears throat> like I said, flying into Australia, we have um, over on the east coast, Brisbane is the main international airport, uh, that people to fly into, and you can see the little Art Dew 2015 there. It is approximately four, four and a half hours uh, west of the airport. Um, can you guys see the scale there? For those people that don't realise how big Australia actually is, minus Alaska, it's about the same land mass as the United States. Um, we have, well, you guys have 300 something million people, we only have 23 million, 24 million, and they all live around the outskirts. So if you want to go for a drive across the country, don't expect to see too many people right in the middle. <coughs> There's plenty of useful information, other FAQs that can be found on the Thunder uh, website, and we're, we're forever updating those. Uh, a lot of the things that we've found is ask questions because sometimes we don't know the answers to give until you guys ask the questions. Uh, we, we experience a little bit in reverse, we come to America often, but um, I know that there's a, a lot of questions, so Get that <clears throat> now, important things like flying rockets, getting motors. That's a recent container that we brought in. I bring in a container, so my company, Australian Rocketry, we bring in a um, container every nine or so months from the US uh, filled with goodies. Uh, I've got a good block precision to plug there, it's always good with that. Um, so, for motor and product supply, if or anyone wanting to fly anything there, don't try and ship motors um, in your bags. You can, <laughs> but you may not actually get to the launch site ever. Um, we, we import all the motors, uh, we carry the, the main ones, uh, your, your Aerotex, your Cesaronis, uh, your real rocket motors, as well as the smaller uh, black powder motors and the likes. Uh, and what we're planning on doing, <coughs> to me, is around, uh, or, or later, in August, we plan on uh, putting out some information for people who want to do special uh, orders of motors or anything. We can organise that to bring it in a container later in the year. Further to that, if people have uh, particular rocket projects, it's not a problem to ship um, or take smaller rockets on planes. The easiest thing to do is to tell them it's model aircraft, which is what they are. Um, if you have big projects and you want to send them and it's going to be a pain, we're also going to allow people to send them to a central location in the United States where we will consolidate that in a container to send them over. So, uh, for example, some of the, um, the Dutch and that, they're, we're working on a consolidated um, shipment for them because they're going to do some pretty big projects as their plan. So, um, yeah, consolidated shipping, if anyone has any queries or, or whatnot, we'll, we'll work out sort of some rates of what that will cost. Um, in due course, but there is the opportunity if you want to fly big projects. Something that a lot of people are getting excited about is actually doing certification flights in Australia, just to say that they've done it in a different country. Um, with regards to the site, there's the opportunity to hire RVs, uh, much like you guys have here, camping, uh, which has no facilities, there's no power or anything like that, because we are on, um, it's Sorry, just digressing, going back to the, um, the Prince Charles thing. They, the farmer did a, um, a Guinness World Record attempt, or a successful attempt, 
and the previous record for the largest wheat crop planted was 900 acres. They managed to do that in 11 hours, uh, over a 24 hour period. They did it in 11 hours and they did 2,600 acres in a 20, well, acres in a um, 24 hour period. So it's, it is just a massive um, giant pool table of, of farming land. Um, hotels, there are some hotels very close by, about 35 minutes away, uh, but they do have limited rooms. We'll be putting out all that information again early next month so people can, you know, it's basically a first in best dress. We'd love to better offer something to everybody, but you know, that, that's hard to do. There are other areas a little bit further out, but we'll put all that information up so people can decide what they're going to do. Again, um, well, ozrocketry.com.au, that's the, the rocket website, so if you want to check out what sort of products are available on that, you can get a good idea there. Apart from that, I guess we can see if there's any questions, but before you ask any any questions, I'd just like to confirm that koalas are not bears, they're marsupials, so stop calling them bears. <laughs> Toilet water does spin the opposite direction. And when in Australia, we don't actually launch our rockets, we drop our rockets, they fall away from the earth, we use the motors to fire them back. <laughs> and if you don't believe me, yeah, don't believe me in that last one. But anyway, uh, is, there, is there any questions specifically now um, about anything? Yes? Roughly, what do you think would cost somebody for this kind of a trip? Oh, okay. So, for flights are the big one. That's what everyone's sort of getting nervous about. Uh, we did a bit of research, and from LA to Brisbane directly, uh, is about $1,400 and something, which is return inclusive of all taxes. So that's there and back. It depends on the time of year that you book, depends on the airline, depends on a few variables. Uh, we came here on flights that were $1,200 return, and we've had them as cheap as $900 return. If you want to spoil yourself, you can spend many thousands of dollars in your business. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, the average is around the $1,500 mark, give or take, but it's, yeah, that's for the flights. The registration fees, we haven't yet set concrete, but they're going to be something similar to what you guys you know, would expect from a, a four-day event, uh, which yeah, should be like about 12 to 15. Um, and then there's going to be uh, whatever cost you have uh, there, if you're going to hire cars and things like that, and anything else that you want to do. It's, it's hard to give an accurate budget, because people are all going to be different on what they... What's the average do. hotel cost? Sorry? What's the average hotel cost? Uh, the hotels that are near the site start off at sixty dollars a night, so they're pretty cheap. Um, but same, you can get places for like in, in major cities from fifty six dollars a night up to how deep your pockets are. Um, so yeah, and your dollars worth more than our dollars, so you get more bank for your money. Yeah, so at the moment the Aussie dollar is about ninety cents to the US dollar. So for every dollar that you guys put in, you know, worth a dollar ten Australian. What's a caravan called? Caravan or an, or an RV? RV, yeah. RV. Um, we we looked at them. They they can be. Uh, I'll have to get back to you specifically on that. And actually, that's something I'll put up on the site because we'll put, we'll list some of the um, RV places. But from memory, for if you were to do a, a four or five day thing, you might pay anywhere from a few hundred dollars up to six, seven hundred dollars, depending on who you book with, the size, you know, all different variables. Yes. For shipping, you, know, you talk about getting stuff down here, what about getting stuff back? That's a good one. It all depends <laughs> on what people want to do. If, if people are planning on, if like a mass of people are planning on sending stuff down, it'd probably be best to consolidate to send something back. Um, because of the, you know, the shipping that I do uh, around the place, that's something that we can look after um, to a degree. Uh, if it's just small individual items, it might be simple just to throw it on Australian roads and send it to USPS by the time it gets here. Um, but it, it all comes down to what sort of uh, feedback I guess we get from people planning on doing it. I just want to come to your place, buy stuff from you, and do it there. I can do that, right? Of course. We sell lots of cars and tubes and, and lock angels. And... Yes, Are you going to have any structured activities 
outside the rocket fly either before or after the death? We, we're looking at some different things to try and not necessarily be structured in the sense of having, we're going to do group, big group activities, but try and give people a lot of um, ideas on, on things they can do. If there are certain um, activities that are happening around that time, for example, two weeks prior to the launch is the Avalon Air Show. So people are real keen on air shows. It's the largest air show in the Southern Hemisphere that comes every two years. Um, the, the big thing with the event is a lot of people are looking at it just a rocket launch. To me, it's not just a rocket launch. It's, it's a holiday in Australia, so the rocket launch is just a small component. For those people that are struggling with um, partners coming along, generally it's wives and the likes. Um, we do have lots of shopping in Australia, so there's those opportunities. But with regards to the um, yeah, structured activities, we, we're still discussing a lot of things that might be possible, um, and it's trying to find that happy medium to, you know, a lot of people might be interested in something and, and others not. So if we can try and put the information out there of what's possible to do, what's available, um, we think that's probably going to work better to give people an idea of what they can um, do. Oh, yeah, we're, not, we're not doing specifically organised tours or anything like that, but if, um, if you want to know something specific about um, whatever, we can either create the FAQs or we can you know, talk some more about that. What, what's your weather like at that time? Beautiful. <laughs> The weather is probably fairly similar to what we're experiencing right now. The the season in Australia, the season in Australia is six months out from uh, the US. So the reason, one reason why we picked March is it's close to spring break for a lot of America. So you, a lot of people already have some sort of holidays available to them, um, and it's on the tail end of our summer. Uh, the peak of summer, we might be averaging in, in Queensland. Yeah, somewhere around 110, 115 uh, sort of Fahrenheit. Uh, this should be hopefully around the uh, yeah, 80s, 90s, something like that. Yes? Um, what latitude is that? Uh, latitude? Yeah, like north to south latitude. It's. Sorry. I'll kind of sort of repeat it into that. <laughs> the uh, Tropic of Capricorn, where the A is under thunder. That's the Tropic of Capricorn. So you're looking at, um, yeah, that's 20, 23 and a half degrees south. So you're looking at maybe about 30 degrees south. Okay, 30, 35. A lot of, like, as you go further north in Queensland, it's just like getting further south in Florida. So getting close to the equator lines. For one of your frequently, frequently asked questions, information about driving down there, like what kind of licenses or anything that would be. I, I got asked that just before and I've written that one down. So <clears throat> I'm going to find out specifically. I know for when we come to the US, we can drive on our Australian, I don't know, Australian licenses. I, I have a feeling it's the same for when you guys come to Australia, but I'll, I'll get that confirmed. Um, and yes, again, we, we have a saying that you guys drive on the right side of the road, but we drive on the right side of the road. So yeah, don't get confused. If you see a car coming directly at you, you should move over. <laughs> <laughs> just, just one thing that I found that driving over here in, in the US, because we, we're driving on that, I'm sitting on the left hand seat, I keep my left hand on my left arm on the centre line. When you're over in Australia, you're sitting on the other side, so this time keep your right arm on the centre line. And that way you know, when you, the hardest part is when you go around a, cur a curve. And the first time I did it here, I was like, oh, watching cars coming that way. It's, it's pretty freaky, you know? <laughs> But if you do, if you keep that arm, the it makes it a lot easier. It's quite achievable to drive <laughs> on the other side. It just takes a little bit of brain training. <coughs> yes? Oh, um, no. The, I don't believe there's any visas for Australians to come, oh, sorry, for USA to come to Australia. Um, I know that we have to do the ESTA program when we come here, um, but there's, it's all free trade and you know, sort of stuff, so you just need to get your passports, which is another thing that I'm trying to get a bit of information on how people can obtain passports, because I know a lot of people have spoken to... to local post passport. office. Sorry? Usually a local post office. Local post office? Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, I'll, I'll put those up for those people who... Eight um, weeks ahead. Eight at weeks. Least, at least. Eight at least. least. 
do it now. Yeah. 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 Another thing for frequently asked, frequently asked questions or any of your um, ham radio or radio frequency requirements for people who are using any radio control or ham equipment? Sure. Um, we, most of the ham license requirements and that are fairly similar. The only couple of catches are some of the, um, the frequency bands. For example, the 900, uh, if you guys are familiar with the big, big red B900s and things like that. In Australia, so they run on a 902 to 928 megahertz range. In Australia, um, the 902 to 915 is actually part of the GSM network for mobile phones. So if we were to get a license for that, it would all be mega million dollars in debt. Uh, so we have specially made units uh, for that come to Australia that run on the 915 to 928. So if you do plan on bringing anything, I'll, I'll put that one up there about some of the frequencies and whatnot. So if you do have any equipment, just be cautious of you know, what you're bringing. And for most of it, if you've got you know, ground station gear, it's just trackers that you need, I'm sure people are happy to help out. The biggest thing is if you guys can get down there, you know, we'll do what we can to sort of help everybody out uh, where possible. Electricity. Oh, electricity. We run on 240 volts, 50 hertz, as opposed to your 110 volts, 60 hertz. So when you come down and check your power pack to make sure that you don't go and put 110 volt power pack in about 240 volts. It's very exhilarating. Kapoom! <laughs> you mainly get to do it once. Magic yes. smoke! <clears throat> yeah, it's um, a, a lot of, some, some hotels and that are very accommodating and they'll have 110 volts or 100 to 110 volt um, sockets. But it's just one thing. Just, if you're going to bring any devices, just check your power packs. Most devices these days are 100 to 240 and 50 and 60 hertz, but you don't want to fry your know, thousand dollar camera because you can like, read that. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. 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 Pretty nice. Uh, over our summer, so um, November, December, January, February, or early February, we do get a lot of thunderstorms and the likes, but in March, and that is starting to really clear up. So, again, another reason why we tried for that. Um, the similar uh, with jet streams and all of that to what the US have, uh, they're all in the same direction. So, which is that? Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, that's right. The other thing is with tornadoes and um, uh, well, you, you have hurricanes, we have cyclones, and they do spin in the opposite direction, just like the toilet. So there's, um, you know, yeah, we, we don't get the tornadoes. about um, on-site facilities at the launch itself? Porta potties, food, well, whatever. We'll, we'll be running the event similar to what you guys are used to where we'll have facilities like that available. The things like uh, stand electricity and that, that's, uh, we won't be having that as a general free-for-all. But foods and everything like that, there'll be, we'll, we'll get as much typical Australian food, meat pies and, and whiskey grubs. No, we don't actually eat whiskey grubs. That is a delicacy in some cultures, um, but we will. It'll be similar to just, just like um, now. Um, there'll be vendors available for things like that. Are you going to have any tents or anything set up for shade at all? Or? We're working on what we can do. When has anyone been to Black Rock Desert? Yeah, a few guys. If, if, if you've ever been to Black Rock, it's a um, pretty much a bring your own everything. Obviously, it's difficult for people traveling um, overseas. Um, so we, we, we're trying to see what we can do to accommodate as much as possible. But there may be a requirement for people to get you know, a $10 chair or something like that if they want to have that available. Um, again, these are the logistics that we're working on um, at the moment. And we'll, we'll get as much of that info out probably over the next month. Because our key thing at the moment is to 
this, this trip to America now was our sort of final step before we put out all the registration information and all those other bits and pieces, and to try and gauge the feedback of what questions people want to know. Because it's much easier for us to now put that information up and people can uh, make a more informed decision of you know, how they want to handle things. So do you have a Walmart for the $10 chairs? Yeah, essentially, I was going to say, it's like us, when we come over here, we just go to the Walmart and buy um, a gazebo and a couple of chairs, you know, $5 chairs. Well, we've got, we don't have Walmarts in Australia, but we've got equipment sort of places like Bunnings. I'll wait for you get a couple of places where you can go and get cheap um, chairs, uh, cheap canopies as well. Um, it's just that, I mean, there are some logistical things, obviously, that we, we just can't supply, but um, as I say, going to balls, you guys, you know, if you want to get us to one mark, get those sort of things, well, when you come over there, you can get the same sort of things there. So. If, if people are travelling in groups as well, it's great, because what, what we often do is when we come here, we will chip in, you buy a gazebo or a marquee, whatever you want to call it, a um, couple of chairs, a table, and for 15, 20 bucks per head, you, you're fully set. So some things like that may happen. Um, again, we'll, we'll accommodate where we can, but if we do it for one, we've got to do it for many, and then it becomes a nightmare. And because we've got so many different countries coming, um, we'll, we'll, we'll do it the best we can, but yeah, there's, we, will, we will put up a bunch of information about if you have to do this, the ballparks so of the money that you're looking at and, and where to get those sorts of things. That's uh, hopefully summed up enough about it and what we're trying to do. Um, you all need to come and explore our 60,000 feet. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll put up some information further. And oh, a couple of things. Those guys who haven't yet checked your registration pack, there is a flyer in there about coming and getting a free flight tag. That's a savory thing, Ben, right? Yeah. And don't lay it on thick, really thin. That's where you pull it down. Like that. I'll spy you, Carol. I'll break that one out. Don't be too greedy. Thank you. Thanks very much. Yeah.